Good, welcome. Paul Teron here. It's the Blunders. Welcome back, one and all. What shall we do about China? Did you know you had to have a China position? Well, yes, you do. Have you been there? I have. What a place. It's all happening. 1.4 billion people. The economy absolutely booming, changing before our eyes, growing at more than 6% for annum for like, I don't know, decades, year after year after year. Hundreds of millions of people being lifted out of poverty. It's absolutely wonderful. And it's been good not just for Chinese people. That economic resurgency has been fantastic for the global economy. Their production of manufactured goods has lowered inflation around the world. It's incredible what they do, what they produce, and how they supply global markets. However, there are a few problems with this sunny view of the Chinese and the Chinese contribution to the global economy. Let's face it, the Chinese are an ambitious and difficult nation that often play dirty. Their businesses steal Western intellectual property. They literally send people to trade fairs with photographs. They take pictures of new products and then take them home and copy them. They buy cars and ship them home to take them apart. They're even trying to make airplanes and all sorts of fancy high technology goods. They prevent fair access to their markets. This is clear. No foreign company can invest in certain industries without a local partner. Some companies are simply banned from entering at all, or conditions are made so onerous that they don't want to be there. And did I mention that China is actually a communist dictatorship? Did I mention that? Yes. 91.5% of the Chinese population are ethnic Han Chinese. So you can imagine what it feels like to be part of the 8.5% that are not, often persecuted. They restrict access to information to all of their people. No Google, no Facebook, no Twitter. Sure, you know, WeChat is everywhere, but it's heavily monitored and censored. And you can get into massive trouble in China for saying certain things on certain days. Search results on Baidu, heavily restricted. It's absolutely horrible. It's a nanny state. This is why wealthy Chinese people said their kids offshore and most of them never go back. That tells you everything you need to know about a place. If you get rich enough, you want to go live somewhere where personal freedoms are more widely observed and established. So what are we going to do about China? What's the best way to view that nation and how is it best to interact with it? Under Barack Obama, the US sought to draw China more deeply into the World Trade Organization and then push them over time to open up their economy to foreign investment, competition, and promote free trade. Chinese students were welcomed at US universities. Many, many of them go there on the basis that once they left and went back home, they'd be a force for change. Chinese tourists welcome all around the world, encouraged to come and see how it is and what personal liberty feels like. Obama basically believed that the net benefit to humanity of embracing the Chinese far, far outweighed the benefits of a fight. Well, so much for that. Enter Donald Trump. No sooner had Trump assumed office than he nuked the TPP. That was a trade deal between 12 countries on multiple continents that would have covered 40% of all global trade, incorporated the Chinese more closely with Japan and the US. Boom! Out it went. Now Trump wants to mobilize his mostly white, mostly male, mostly non-college educated support base in the US by painting China as an arch enemy. This is how he thinks. The bigger and scary the enemy is, the better for your supporters and the more that they trust you, Trump that is, to represent their interests in this global warfare. So the Chinese are evil. Yes, the Chinese are terrible, along with, I don't know, Mexicans, French wine, German luxury cars, Jeff Bezos, Google, the fake news, mainstream media, etc., etc. Despite what Trump says to the contrary, tariffs on imported Chinese goods into the US are a tax on US consumers. And the higher they go, the more the impact will be felt. So now we're trapped in this kind of like tit-for-tat tariff war stuff. Last week, the Chinese said, nah, you F off, Trump blew his stack. He announces higher tariffs. Yes, higher, they're going up. We're going to take the ones that are at 25 to, you know, 30, or maybe we won't, or next week we will. The tariffs next week, yes, that'll be 10% more and another 30 billion, you know what I mean. It's just going crazy. It's like a nuclear war. It's like a tit-for-tat trade war. He's given them an extension yesterday night, so now we're up again. Trump has also basically called for American companies to pull out of Asia's largest economy with regard to their production. He said, I'm ordering them. He said this on Twitter, like he's some kind of Roman emperor. The Chinese can't abide the US trade representative, Robert Lighthizer, and they absolutely despise Peter Navarro, the alternative thinking economist who's somehow an economic assistant to the president. So this stuff, I don't know, it's not going very well and it's not gonna get any better. What do we do now? Now listen to me. Remember, 
Trump is an aberration. The global trend is more towards more trade and not less. China will liberalize in time as its people gain confidence. That is an internal trend which is irresistible. Shareholders of the London Stock Exchange should reject the current buyout offer from the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, which wants to buy the Londoners this week. Why? Because the Hong Kong Stock Exchange has 13 directors, only six of which are elected by shareholders. The other seven are appointed by the Hong Kong government. And the Hong Kong government, as we know, is appointed by the blokes in Beijing. No, thank you very much. What about some other policy initiatives that are bubbling around? That one, no, it's out, not good enough. Here in Africa, how should we view the Chinese? My view would be we should reject their kind offers of funding for infrastructure finance. No thanks, we don't need your money for roads and dams. Instead, let's reverse the direction of those capital flows. Let's invest in their companies and then agitate for more transparency in their home markets. So for example, if you own Nuspers or process shares, let's pressure us, the 30% held 10 cent, to push back against Chinese government repression and censorship. Let's hold them accountable that's the way this process and this kind of flow ought to be going. The Chinese are very well known for playing the long game. So let's play them at their own game. Let's outweigh them. So Hong Kong, you know what? It's not part of China. It's not part of the mainstream. Let's support the resistance movement in Hong Kong. Democracy must be extended, not curtailed. And while I'm on the subject, Taiwan is not part of China. I know that's what our diplomats tell us it is, but it's not. It's an independent country. Democracy should be extended, not curtailed. So, hey, China, not so fast. We're going to wait you out.